Hello and good morning. This video tutorial is going to be a quick tutorial on actually how I go about making all of my videos. I've had a number of requests and uh, individual questions about which tools I'm using, how I do my recording, um, and so forth. So I just wanted to go ahead and, and sort of share I guess what you would consider the secrets of, of how I do the recording and how I create the videos I create. So I guess we'll start at the beginning here. The first tool that I use to do my recording is Camtasia. And I use Camtasia for the Mac. Obviously this is all being recorded on a Mac, as you can tell by the uh, lovely Apple up here in the upper left hand corner. So there's also a, a Windows version for Camtasia as well as a Mac version and the Mac version is the version I'm using there's a free trial as well and so as you can see here if you look in the kind of to the right hand side here in the center this is where I'm doing my this is where I control the recording from so I can stop the recording I can pause the recording I can start over it tells me how long I've been recording if you look over here you can see where are we at here looking for the icon for Camtasia a little higher up. So where are we at? I think I've gone by it. Now <laughs> I can't find it. Oh, there it is. Okay, it just changed. Yeah, so the new version just came out and it just changed. So that is the uh, the icon there for Camtasia for Mac. So I literally start the recording and uh, sometimes I'll do full screen. Other times I'll simply do an HD recording. I think 1920 by 1080, and that's how I'm getting the the videos in high definition that I post up onto YouTube. So Camtasia step number one. Uh, step number two, in some cases, is going to be uh, being able to draw on the screen. So there's many times where you'll see me drawing either directly onto the screen or inside of a program. And I use the uh, CTH670, the Wacom Bamboo Create Pen and Touch Tablet. And this is exactly what it looks like right here. And if you were to Google that, there's some great reviews out there and some great feedback. I actually uh, enjoy the tool. I haven't had any issues with it. There were some feedback uh, early on when I was researching a great pen and tablet to use that uh, this had broken for a number of people. But I, I haven't had any issues. Of course, I don't transport mine around. It just stays here in my office on my desk. All right, so once you've got the tablet, right, or I should say, once you can record with Camtasia, and then you have a tablet, you're going to need to be able to draw on the screen. And so I use Desk Scribble in order to do my drawing on the screen, and I'll do a quick demo for you here. As you can see in the upper left-hand corner, this is the Desk Scribble sort of control pad. Well, I've also created some, some hotkeys, so if I were to do the command P you can see that the cursor changed into here I'll bring it down here cursor changed into a pen right so if I do C by itself it just changes it back to the cursor and again command P and it changes into a pen and I'll show you how to do that command P right or if you wanted to set up some hotkeys so if I come to preferences you can see here that you can go ahead and set some command shortcuts up and so this is where to go to the pen tool I simply did command P if I click here I'm gonna record a shortcut here let's do for the eraser let's do control Y and it's gonna tell you that that's already in use to do a sticky note so I'll do control let's see if we can do control L hopefully that's not taken so we'll do control L nope control L is taken so we'll go back, I'll do uh, control, what about control J? Or command J, sorry, I keep saying control. So command J. So I do command J, and so now when I do command J, the eraser tool will show up. So I'll close down the preferences here, and you can see I've got the pen tool. If I do C, it takes me back to my cursor. So from here, I could actually have the normal cursor, and I'm actually using my pen to do this. Just push down very lightly for a mouse click. As soon as I do Control P, or sorry, Command P, as soon as I do Command P, I can write, right? You can see here I'm writing on top of applications, right? So this is my web browser. When I click here, it doesn't change anymore because it's the pen. So now I can write. 
and so I can't get over to CRT so I'd have to hit C hit the window and then do command P and then I could write so if I were to hit enter again it still thinks I'm using the pen tool I'd have to do C and then tap in there hit enter let's do EN if I do a show run right and so now it's acting as if it's the cursor but again if I do command P if I want to write on here real quick I can say you know take a look at interface WLAN AP1 or hey look over here here's the clock rate the nice thing about desk scribble is very easy to change colors right so now I'm in red right come back over here and we can go to blue okay so again very simple to change colors and it, again the nice thing about it is it allows you to write on top of applications so this window here is a VMware Fusion it's a, an XP Pro VM and so I can actually you know say here is my Cisco IME demo here is my packet tracer quick launch icon you know here is my start bar so it's very nice allows you to annotate directly on top of applications and again this is called desk scribble so if I do command N it clears my entire screen so it basically erases everything that's on the screen so let me change this back to red right so you can draw if I do command N clears the screen if I do C it takes me back to the cursor and I'm still controlling the cursor with the pen I'm just simply moving it around the tablet surface alright so that's desk scribble now another option and this is if I'm not mistaken this came with uh, the the Wacom bamboo tablet that I have that CTH 670 and what it is is it's called sketchbook express and let me see if I can find the logo for it. there it is right there so sketchbook express right which is a very nice uh, little application that allows you to pull in an image right so here's an image I've created in GNS3 and now I'm not using desk scribble I'm actually using sketchbook express but this is going to require an extra few, few extra steps you know I had to do use the grab utility which is right here I had to use the grab utility to capture this space from the GNS3 application save it as a file and then pull it into um, sketchbook express but again once I'm in here right it's very easy I can change the thickness right as you can see or the width of what I'm trying to do and here's the pen thickness right, and that's what I prefer the colors changing the colors is a little little kludgy right so you have to press and hold down and then kind of rotate around transparent white gray and not a ton of choices so if I wanted to change to blue I just press hold down drag over to blue and now I can write in blue I do like the fact that you've got a little command palette right here where you can change things and draw around so if I come up to file I can add images save images right you can flip the image you have a help menu you have some preferences that you can set with sketchbook express right brush don't display the crosshair and the factory defaults and so this is sketchbook express so sometimes I do this in when I teach my classes I'll use sketchbook express if I have an image already queued up again desk scribble makes it easy because you don't have all these intermediate steps where you've got to cut save things you can just simply come up to scale well, actually you don't even need to go to sketchbook express just do command P and you can see there's the little sketchbook express pen but the lines when I'm drawing with this thickness anyway are not as nice as the lines that you get out of uh, sketchbook express so desk scribble is basically a very easy way to be able to draw on your desk if I wanted to change uh, the thickness I'm trying to remember I don't think it's under presentation I was actually looking at this the other day special characters yeah I'd have to do some digging around to figure out where I saw oh wait I think it was a right click let me grab my mouse here I think it may have been a right click on that now trying to remember there was a way to change the thickness the other day as you can see now it is a little thicker right and so that's definitely one way and that was with the mouse but when I pulled the pin back up 
gets a little a little broken up. All right, so that's Desk Scribble. This is Sketchbook Express. They're both really good tools. So if I do Command N, it wipes out all of that, right? But I'm still in the Desk Scribble with the pen. So I'll hit C, and it'll take me back out. So that's how I draw on the screens, right? And then the next tool that we have is Secure CRT by Van Dyke Software. And this is actually something that has to be purchased. Um, they do have a trial version, but it is a little bit expensive. I think it's $99, or it was not too long ago. And so Secure CRT is this application here that allows, it's basically a terminal emulator. And you could use PuTTY. Uh, PuTTY's not a bad tool. You could even use Terminal, which is part of uh, the basic Mac build, but I definitely prefer Secure CRT. I think it's uh, ease of use, and not only that, but its, it's um, flexibility and feature set is far better than anything else that's out there on the market today. And so when I'm doing demonstrations, you know, I'll say that this is Router 2, here's Router 3, Router 4, Router 5, and these uh, this first set here, these are all actually physical components that I have uh, labbed up together, right? Okay, so Secure CRT is a great terminal emulator. And then finally, uh, a lot of students want to know uh, what can I download to practice with? Because Packet Tracer, again, Packet Tracer is a great utility, and we're going to take a look at that in a second. But in the end, uh, Packet Tracer is sort of a, a very trimmed down version of the Cisco IOS capabilities on the routing and switching side and so what I always recommend to my students is to go download uh, GNS3. Now you'll see here it says early access to the new GNS3. I actually signed up for this the other day but actually let me take a step back. So there's a Windows version, right? There's a Mac version, there's a Linux version, there's the source code but one of the great things about GNS3 that's going to be coming out here soon is switching capabilities, right? So GNS3 1.0 and they're going to be adding switching capabilities to GNS3, right? And you can see they've got some Amazon Cloud stuff here, they've got some VMware. And so if you have an opportunity, this is whoops. GNS3 is free and I'm actually going to do up a tutorial video on installing GNS3, downloading, installing and uh, getting it up and running with the 3725 routers, right? so that you'll have some sort of an idea as to how, go, how to go about uh, downloading and setting up GNS3. So, looks like the page is slowly dying there. All right, so there's GNS3. So, the majority of the videos that you've probably seen from me are with Packet Tracer. And so, a quick note on Packet Tracer, and you can see this is a VM here. So, I've just created with Fusion, I've created a Windows XP Pro VM. I've had this VM for years and years and years, and yes, I'm definitely aware of the fact that XP is no longer supported, uh, no patches coming out from Microsoft, but um, I love this VM. So let me go to help and about, and Packet Tracer is typically you need to be part of a uh, Cisco Networking Academy course to be able to download and utilize Packet Tracer. And so this version just came out the other day with a ton of bug fixes, a lot of enhancements for EIGRP and OSPF. So if you're running Packet Tracer, and you have access to the uh, to the code or to the um, to the download section, uh, the Network and Academy site. You definitely want to be running version 6.1.0.0120. And again, the beauty of Desk Scribble. If I do Command P, I could go ahead and immediately annotate on the screen what I'm doing or what I want you to see, right? Or what I want you to pay attention to. Put an asterisk here. Whoops, terrible asterisk. All right, so. That's the nice thing about Desk Scribble. If I want to take it off, Command N and then C to go back to my cursor, right? So that's the version that you want to be running. Um, and that's pretty much it, right? And so then I would record the videos here with Camtasia. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, I'm going to pull up a previous version if it'll let me here. And let's see if it'll allow me to open a recent, oh, it will, okay. So here are the packet tracer videos I've recorded. So 1.3.1.3. And we'll pull this up right now. So this is one of my previous packet tracer activities because a lot of students have commented on the intro and they've wanted to know 
how I got the intro in there and how I recorded the intro. So this is the actual recording here, right? Um, the intro is simply, and you can go ahead and grab any kind of music from iTunes and cut it down, right? So I just dragged and dropped Faip de Oaid from Tool and put that in here and then trimmed it down and picked the section that I was actually interested in. So if I were to rewind this and click play, you can see that that sound, that's not coming from the video, that's actually coming from this song right here. And that is the intro right here. And so, let me pause that for a second. So this is the intro right here. And I basically went to iStock Photo and looked up videos and got one in the .mov format that I was that I really liked and simply placed it in here right and then I placed the piece of music in here that I wanted to run with this video intro and then I simply did a transition fade in fade out and just dragged and dropped that the fade in fade out and it'll go back up to the top because it's already in here you can see it went back up but that's what I do and then it just simply fades into this video and so that's pretty much how I use Camtasia and then once I'm satisfied with the video I'll save the video and then I'll come over here to share and then I export it I never export it uh, as a web page or to iTunes or I, I don't do advanced export I just simply come up to export it's gonna give you a dialog box and I've got a lot going on here so it's kind of running a little slow and for those of you that are interested this is a, an iMac and I actually have 16 gigs of memory uh, in this iMac. Unfortunately, when I got it, I have the two terabyte uh, SATA drive, which is not the fastest of drives. So then I simply export it as, and you can see it's gonna automatically export it out as an MP4, right? And then I'll simply save it with the highest quality to ensure that it is HD for the viewers. And then I simply click on export. It does take, uh, depending on the length of the video, uh, it does take about five to 10 minutes to export it out typically. Um, for longer videos, obviously, your results are going to vary. Your mileage may vary. And, um, and then that's it. And then I go over to YouTube or to Google uh, and go to YouTube and um, upload the video. And that's it. And so that is how I create the videos. There's an application that I've used before um, over here, the Bamboo I'm trying to remember the name of it. The little notebook that I'm using, like when I'm doing my subnetting, I can't remember the name of it. It's like a bamboo, uh, it's part of the Wacom tool, bamboo doc, here we go. Yeah, so this is it, there we go, right there. All right, bamboo paper, right? So when you install the software and the drivers and things like that for your Wacom bamboo tablet, you get this application um, along with that. And so it allows me to flip back and forth. And so this is typically, where I was doing my my subnetting, right? I mean, you can simply flip the page, okay? And you can change, again, the thickness of the lines when you click and hold down, and that's kind of where you get to pick your colors, obviously. There's the thickness of your line, so we'll change it to that, and we'll do red, and then you can see, press and hold down, right? And so not a lot of bells and whistles here. Um, I, I like to use this when I'm doing my subnetting that way I can flip back and forth between the different pages and just go ahead and move on right and so this came with the tablet when you install uh, the software and the drivers and it's just called bamboo paper alright so that's all I've got for this tutorial video um, hopefully this answered all the questions that uh, you might have as to how I'm recording the videos what tools I'm using to record the videos and who knows Maybe this will inspire you to get out there and create some videos of your own. All right, that's all I've got for this video tutorial. I hope it's been helpful and best of luck to everybody out there pursuing your networking career and your networking certifications. Have a great day, everyone.